In this section we'll be discussing the idea of uh, post hoc testing, um, which if you recall from previous lectures on the ANOVA is how you're able to uh, discern differences between uh, uh, individual groups and multiple comparisons. So just as a little recap, um, first uh, remember to recall that an ANOVA cannot tell you which groups are statistically significant from one another. It can only tell you globally if there is a difference. And so you need some sort of test afterwards to find which groups are statistically significant from one another, and that's where our post hoc tests come in. So the question is then, what test can you use? Um, uh, a very common one is actually doing a, a Bonferroni correction uh, on a t-test after uh, performing an ANOVA, uh, but you can also use what's called a, a Tukey test, um, and which we'll go over in detail through an example. Uh, the only caveat of a Tukey test is that it assumes uh, equal sample sizes between groups. Uh, this is the most uh, commonly used of the post hoc tests, so this will be the one that we cover moving forward. Um, however, if your sample sizes between groups are unequal, you would uh, look into a Tukey Kramer test instead of a Tukey test, so just something to keep in mind uh, for the future. Um, so the logic behind a Tukey test goes as follows. Uh, it basically calculates a value that's denoted as W that's based upon uh, uh, the mean squared error, which uh, is something that you should be familiar with through your ANOVA calculations, uh, uh, sample sizes, and values from a, what's called a studentized Q distribution table. So uh, it's the Q distribution is just another distribution that we'll be using. So uh, you can add it to your repertoire of uh, uh, standard normal distributions, T distributions, and uh, F distributions. Now we're talking about Q distributions. And so this is the equation here. And uh, um, uh, Almost everything here should be recognizable, the mean squared error from the ANOVA calculations and being your sample size. And this Q uh, is something that you haven't seen before, but it's uh, something that we just read off a table like anything else that we've used uh, uh, for distribution. So uh, the alpha is just the significance, which is generally 0.05. A in this case is the number of groups that you have that you're comparing. and uh, a times n minus the quantity n minus 1 is just the degrees of freedom for the within, within sample calculation, where n is just the number of samples that you have. And the logic goes that once you've calculated w, if the difference between uh, two sample means is greater than w, then they are statistically significant from one another. So we'll uh, go through this by looking at an example. And so uh, we're going to look at the curing times of uh, five different polymers in minutes. Um, each one of these polymers, one through five, was tested nine times, and they had uh, mean curing times that are in this table below. So to begin with, our null hypothesis will state that the curing times for all five polymers are equal. Um, so you should be able to see that because the only thing that we're changing uh, is the polymer uh, type for the curing test, we should do a one-way ANOVA on the data we have before. And when we do that, um, I'll leave it to you to find that you get the following output from doing a one-way ANOVA with a um, mean squared error of 0 0.088 and an F value of 37.84. Uh, the F critical value for this can be determined through looking at F table for as 2.61. And since the F statistic we calculate, 37.84 is much greater than, than 2.61, we reject the null hypothesis. So that says that there is a statistically significant difference, and so now we'll do a two-key test to determine what means are different from one another. So the first step is to find our Q value, and this table on the right is a uh, Q table for an alpha of 0 0.05. And so the way it works is... Uh, uh, the we the um, we use an a of uh, five because that's the number of groups that we're looking at and degrees of freedom for the error is uh, the first column here so we go over to five which is the number of groups and then down to forty so it's 
540, and we find that the Q value we need is 4.04. .04. So then we plug that into this equation for W, and we already know what the mean squared error is from the ANOVA table. It was 0 0.088, and our N, in this case, is uh, 9. So we can then calculate W, and we get a value of 0 0.4. So the next step is we'll take our five means for our five different polymers and we'll arrange them in increasing order. So, um, so now the order is uh, goes from the smallest to the largest from left to right. And we're going to underscore the pairs that differ by less than our value of W, which was 0 0.4. And so you can see that uh, sample 1 and sample 4, they only differ by 0 0.2 which is smaller than 0 0.4, so we'll underline it. And similarly, uh, sample 3 differs from sample 5 by 0 0.2, so we'll underline that as well. And so the pairs that are not underscored by the same line are statistically significant from one another. And so what does that mean? That means that sample 1 and sample 4 are not statistically significant from one another, but they are statistically significant from 2, 3, and 5 because they're not underscored by the same line. Similarly, samples 3 and 5 are not statistically significant from one another. But they are, but sample 2 is significantly different from 3 and 5 because it's not underscored by the same line. And so once we find these statistical significance, uh, one of the important things that we want to know how to do is how to um, uh, is how to uh, represent them graphically if you were trying to plot something for a lab report or whatnot. And so generally, uh, significance is uh, uh, denoted using stars. Uh, and so, uh, moving, we'll start with uh, the fact that, uh, uh, that s uh, sample two here is statistically significant from one and three. And so the way we do this is with a star, the longer line denotes which one is statistically significant from the two shorter lines. So you can see two is statistically significant from one and three. So we can go through and do this again, where we can say four, which is denoted by the long line here, is statistically significant from two, three, and five which is what we found before. Similarly, we found that 1 was statistically significant from 2, 3, and 5. So you can see, uh, while it looks a little uh, messy, this is just one way to uh, uh, represent significance. Uh, you could also say that you could also represent which ones weren't significant and just assume that they were, so long as you had that noted in a caption underneath. So hopefully this gives you uh, an appreciation through a simple example of how to uh, uh, calculate statistical significance um, after doing an ANOVA for multiple, multiple comparisons. Um,